Today let me introduce you to uh, my very first ham radio transceiver I ever bought and this is the actual um, unit I bought many many years ago I must have been 15 or so 16 and uh, cost me a lot of money I can't really remember it's this one here it's the Yaeso FD726R VHF UHF transceiver and I have to put this down it's fairly heavy and uh, I don't want to drop it um, this one is in mint condition and I use it um, since, I had, since I have it nearly every week. Uh, it comes from a time when um, it was required to sit a Morse test to get an amateur radio license. And in those days I went to school and I didn't have the time or could be bothered for that matter. I also didn't have the real estate to put up large uh, HF antennas. So I decided to go the, for the uh, VHF UHF license. And it was an exciting time. The satellites were all up and running. And uh, this transceiver is a dream come true for satellite operators. There was an optional satellite module, so you could track, track the frequencies when you tune up and down. And uh, it came with some fairly nifty accessories as well. Uh, although there was, n uh, there was a um, CTCSS module to use it on the, tr uh, um, on the repeaters, but uh, it's not re really designed uh, to do this. If you need a CTCSS module for it, go to pyx.com. They make CT, uh, CTCSS, a difficult word really, units for all vintage transceivers, more or less, give or take. And they're very good, they work straight out of the box, I have a couple of them myself. Um, at the time there were also some Russian satellites in orbit, which uh, 21 and 28 megahertz download, uh, downlinks, and so Yaeso made this. This is the, uh, well, you can read it from the box, the 21 to 28 megahertz. Um, HF unit for the 726R, so you could re, uh, receive these satellites on these frequencies and you could also transmit there if you, if you wanted to do so. Um, yeah, this one here is rare actually, it's brand new, it's in the box and uh, it's never been used, so uh, this might be up for grabs very soon. Um, spare parts for this transceiver are readily available. Uh, what you need to look out for if you buy one of these is the physical appearance, so you know it hasn't been abused and uh, also the RX and TX boards have relays uh, which tend to cease after a while. Um, another downside of these is these the channel selector knob, this one here, you can hear it click hopefully. Um, if you use this a lot it wears out and it needs to be replaced and the volume knob is um, it doesn't last very long either so at one point in its lifetime you need to replace the volume knob. I had to replace this one uh, probably three or four times but then uh, I used it uh, all over the world in almost four or five, well, no, six countries I used it. And uh, for that it still looks very good. It came with uh, some, some extras if you wanted to have um, them and if you wanted to have a nice lineup. Um, one of them, of course, is the external speaker. This is the SP-102. It was originally designed for the FT-102, but uh, the size is a perfect fit. Um, for the 726R as well and it has some, some basic filters. It looks the part, it's a, not high quality. A set of PC active speakers actually produces nicer sound than this one but if you're into lineups then uh, this is the matching speaker. And also um, you could connect the uh, MH, what is it, MH1 microphone, the desk microphone from Yaeso. Here's one. This is one uh, I just bought recently. Obviously the clip got damaged so I re just replaced it with a, a professional microphone clip. And they sound great actually. And uh, it's one of the best microphones out there, out there still, I believe. So if you get one in a good condition from a non-smoker, and this one is from a non-smoker, thanks God for that, um, go and get one. They set you back around 100 pounds. And what else is there to say? Um, these are the modules. Hang on a second, it is so heavy. This one has fit, I fitted uh, a two, seven, two meters, 70 centimeters and the six meter module. Um, if you buy this unmodified, it comes by default with two and 70 centimeters. And this one over here is empty. If you buy a module and you fit it, make sure you put some heat paste on the back of the module because they get fairly hot and the heat needs to be dissipated through this panel here. Uh, also, um, I hear time and time again, oh, I bought one of these and uh, I was promised it works and it doesn't work, it doesn't power up. 
Well, you might want to have a look at this little plug here. This one is the, uh, let me get it out, the DC dummy plug. Uh, it's meant to uh, make a DC lead for it. But this one by default works from the main, main supply. But also, if you haven't put this in, um, then there is no bridge between pins, uh, where is it? You can't see the upside down, one and three. These two here on the, well, uh, from the, on the, by right, these two here. Um, you need to bridge them. Once they are bridged, uh, the transceiver will power up. Without the plug, the transceiver will not power up, okay? So keep this in mind. Um, there's no need to buy these plugs. If you lose your plug, just uh, bridge these two pins. Okay, so far so good. I put this back into my shack now and uh, hook it up to an antenna and uh, have some more fun with it. Um, Yaisa made so many of them, so uh, there's an abundance of spare parts for them. Unless you want to work on component level, which is entirely possible. All the components are stock components. Um, it's worth having one of these. The, uh, the next model up is the 736R. Uh, I had one of these as well, but um, for some reason I didn't get on with them. And uh, they were complicated to operate, especially on the satellites. This one is much easier. Um, try to get the satellite module for it. I think we at current have two or three of them in stock. Um, and you have a nice satellite station. Unfortunately, Yaisa never made a 23 centimeter module for this uh, radio, but as far as I know, at this time, it's 2018, there is no um, 23 centimeter satellite in orbit. I might be wrong. You can tell me down in the comments. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, if this uh, video is any good to you, thumbs up, if not, thumbs down. And uh, please do subscribe. Um, I want to hit a thousand subscribers, okay? Thanks very much and uh, see you on the bands. Bye. Oh, Zerbi.